A shocking case out of Richmond. A man was declared brain dead and was prepared to donate his organs, though hard to believe he was in fact alive. Kylie Hill sat down with the man's sister today and learns more about the day she says altered their lives forever. Donna Rohrer says her brother is a shell of the person he used to be. TJ was an outdoorsman. He liked to be in the woods and he says his favorite thing was to watch the deer. He loved camping, hiking, um, all things outdoor and everything like his life's been stripped away from him. Her brother, 36 year old TJ Hoover had his life changed forever. On October 25th, 2021, he was admitted to Baptist Health Richmond's emergency room. He was experiencing cardiac arrest and was deemed code blue. We were told TJ had no reflexes, no responses, no brain waves, no brain activity. And we were told that the 26th, the 27th, 28th and 29th. And the 27th, we made the decision as a family to remove him from life support because, you know, he was brain dead. Because of that declaration, they decided to honor TJ's wishes as an organ donor. We had his honor walk, but almost as soon as his honor walk started, his eyes started open. And not just open, he was tracking around looking to see, you know, what was going on. And uh, we were told that was just reflex, it's just a normal, normal instinct. He's not there. But that wasn't the case. In fact, he wasn't dead. He was very much alive. It's a matter of life and death. You know, it's more than frustration. It's, I feel like they were trying to choose my brother. They were going to sacrifice my brother's life to save how many ever other people. Donna didn't know about any of this until the beginning of this year when Nicoletta Martin, a surgical preservation coordinator, contacted her. She was on first call for Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates, or CODA, and was on her way to the OR to take over care. That's when she received a horrifying phone call. He was then thrashing around, crying, trying to pull his tube out. He was pushing everybody's hands away that were trying to uh, prep and drape him for surgery. And it's kind of crazy, but um, the doctors decided we're absolutely not going to do this case. Um, the CODA coordinator that was on site that day actually called CODA's admin for some guidance and was told you will find another surgeon or you'll lose your job because we're going to complete this case. She said nobody, not even TJ himself, could believe what was happening. TJ has a lot of short-term memory problems, but TJ knows what happened. TJ says, why me? Why did they want my organs? And TJ feels guilt still about, you know, he did not die so that people could get his organs to save their lives. That's horrific to me. Nobody should ever be put in that position. That's not what this mission is about. An unlikely bond. Now, both Donna and Nicoletta are demanding answers. When TJ woke up, why was he then sedated and paralyzed instead of taken back to the ICU immediately to have a repeat neural exam? Why was TJ's life not honored and he treated like, like a patient? Network for Hope did release a statement to us regarding this case. They said, quote, while we cannot discuss specific case details, we are concerned by the way this case has been misrepresented. We regularly review our internal practices and remain committed to fulfilling our mission of saving lives through donation while respecting and caring for donors and their families, as well as prioritizing patient safety, end quote. The more that comes out, it's still shocking for me, and I'm living it. You know, so it's everyone else's story, it's our reality. And it's shocking to hear some of what he went through. Kylie Hill, Fox 56 News.